we need to define these three main criteria. We start by consistency. Consistency is a condition on the numerical scheme. Namely, that the scheme must tend to the differential equation when the steps in time and space tend to zero. Next, we need to define stability. Here it is, Alan. This is a condition on the numerical solution and it is namely this that all errors such as round of error for example due to the uh, final arithmetic on your computer must remain bounded when the iteration process progresses. So, in other words, for finite values of delta x and delta t, The error has to remain bounded when the number of time steps n tends to infinity. So, if the error, let's call is epsilon bar at point i and time n is equal to u n i minus u bar n i, where this is going to mean the following. Um, this is the difference between the computed solution u and i and the exact solution of the discretized equation u bar in i, then the stability condition is that the limit when n tends to infinity of this error that I've defined above has to be less than or equal to a certain constant k at any fixed delta t.
Okay, note that, well, let's write these notes. Um, the um, stability condition is a requirement on the numerical scheme. And it doesn't require any condition on the differential equation. As we define the error, the differential equation doesn't even appear there. does not require any condition on the differential equation. Two, the stability does not ensure that the error is not large. Let's see. Um, stability does not ensure that the error will not become an acceptably large at intermediate time steps Tn equals nt and delta t, as long as it remains bounded. And three, we will we'll in introduce a more general is, um, uh, definition of stability later. Now, so we've got, we've got um, consistency and stability. There's the third condition that's called convergence. Yes? Um, well, um, notice that the error was defined as the error at any point. Uh, we had um, a computed solution. We had an error that was this error at any point. And we're asking that error to remain bounded for all time. So the error at any particular point and for all time should remain bounded. This is, has the, the limit of the absolute value of this has to be less than some constant here, so, which could be large. Third, we need to define convergence. And this is a condition on the numerical solution. The numerical solution must tend to the exact solution of the mathematical model.
when the time steps, when the steps in both time and space tend to zero. In other words, when the mesh is refined. So, if the error is defined in this case as, now I'm going to use a squiggle instead of a bar, and I equal to U I N minus U squiggle, where U squiggle i n is equal to um, a function of the point in space and the point in time. So this is what this indicates, but it's a function. So this is the this, this error is the difference between now the computed solution, as we had before, but with respect with in comparison to the exact solution of the I mean the analytical um, the exact solution of the analytical equation. the analytical model, the differential equation. So if that is our definition of the error, then the convergence condition is that the limit when delta x tends to zero and delta t tends to zero of this arrow squiggle squiggle now not the um not the same definition the, you note note that the, these two criterions involve different definitions of error tends to zero no again that the stability and convergence criterions do not refer to the same error Okay. Now the conditions, these three conditions on stability, consistency, and convergence are related to each other. They're related to each other through what's called the equivalence theorem of Lax. This is very important. So I'm using red for the title. The equivalence theorem of lax and this is that for a well post initial value problem and a consistent we're using the word consistent in the word in the way that we've just defined it this criticization scheme Stability is the necessary and sufficient condition for convergence. So we have two tasks when analyzing a numerical scheme. First, we have to analyze the consistency relation. That is, um, uh, you, you know, we have to look at the order of accuracy um, um, of the scheme, and that leads to the truncation error, of which we're going to discuss a little bit more in a moment. And then second task, we have to analyze is stability. And then immediately convergence is guaranteed after that. 
So, the, these three conditions are related to each other in the following way. So, consistency is a relationship between the discretized equation and the differential equation. We said that the, the scheme must the, the scheme, the numerical scheme or the discretized equation must tend to the differential equation as the steps in time delta x and delta t tend to zero. Uh, stability is a relationship between the numerical solution and this exact solution of the numerical scheme. And we're asking for the um, um, errors between these two to remain bounded as the iteration process continues. And the um, uh, theorem, um, the um, equivalence theorem of Lex tells us that if we have a consistent numerical scheme that satisfies stability, then automatically convergence is guaranteed, where convergence now relates the numerical solution with the exact solution of the differential equation. Okay, so here we have what we obtain from the computer, the numerical solution, here is what we want, the exact solution, and in between we have a differential equation and a discretized equation. Okay, and stability refers to the numerical solution and the exact solution of the scheme, not of the differential equation, but of the numerical scheme. They differ, they are different from each other. And we'll see now how different they are from each other I'll just um, continue five, five more minutes to let you go to your next class. So we have already in introduced previously the concept of the truncation error. But we just introduced the idea when we looked at the Taylor expansions, but we can restate consistency in the terms of the truncation error in the following way. We can restate and say that a consistent scheme is one in which the truncation error tends to zero for delta t and delta x tending to zero. So let's now consider the uh, linear convection equation again. So we're all looking at our, the equation for our step one. And let's select, like we did in the uh, numerical example that I showed you, let's select the second order central difference in space and the forward difference in time. So example, uh, central difference in space and um, forward difference in time for the um, linear convection. So we know, we've written this already a little while ago, what this is going to look like in the discretized form. And we've written it many times, so it's engraved in our memory. We can now write these almost from um, by heart. Central difference, so we're looking at one point ahead and one point behind point I, and this is equal to zero. So now write the following Taylor expansions. Four. Um, ui n plus 1, ui i plus 1, sorry, un i plus 1, and u n i minus 1. So we'll write a Taylor expansion for these guys around these, this guy, the, 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 the guy in the center. Okay? So first we have ui n plus 1 is equal to ui n plus delta x, I'm sorry, delta t, we're looking at the time, 
and it, this is the uh, partial derivative of u with respect to time at points n and i. Then we have our term delta t squared over 2, second derivative of u with respect to time n i plus delta t cubed divided by 6, third derivative plus higher order terms. Then for this guy here, we're going to write u n i plus 1. So now we're doing a Taylor expansion in x, and we have du dx, n i plus dx squared over 2. Second derivative of u with respect to x, and delta x cubed and the third the third guy is n i minus one so the only thing that changes are some of the signs we're going to have a minus for the odd powers here That's a minus. Phew. Okay. Finished. Now what we need to do is we substitute these expressions back into the equation. Um, this equation here. Let's call this equation star. So back in star. And we're going to have, well, notice first of all that this, for this equation, now watch, I'm going to reuse what I have right here so that I don't have to write so much. For this equation right here, I'm going to take this one to the other side and then divide by delta t. So, I have this here, a minus, and this becomes equal, and then I divide by delta t over, okay? So imagine I divide by delta t, so this is going to become, that I'm going to lower this by 1, all of these by 1. And I'm going to do the same with these other ones here. When I do this with this ones, so I'm going to, uh, let's see, be careful with the signs here. Take this to the other side. and No, sorry, I want to precisely... Turn this into a minus here, and we have equal here, but equal minus. Don't, let's not forget the minus. And now, um, I take these two, and, sub, and so I, I'm going to divide by delta x, I'm not showing that part, and then subtract. So I can put these back in the equation in, in, in over here, right? You can see that. Okay, so what am I going to get? I'm going to get, well, the first, this is going to be easy, because once I divide by delta t, I get exactly what I have here, but... I'm going to have all of these additional terms, right? So, u n plus 1 i minus, I want to make sure I don't make a mistake here, I'm going to go slowly, divided by delta t, and I'm going to leave all those other terms on the right-hand side, but from making, from dividing by delta x, this one, and subtracting, you will see I have u n um, um, uh, the u n go uh, sorry I have the, this guy cancels out and I have this minus this which is what I have here divided by delta x but when I subtract it these two have different signs so I'm have I'm having two delta x here so I can divide over by the two and it's that two that I have here you see that everybody follow that I'm skipping step but I'm trying to show you so that I, I wouldn't have to write as much but you can see that I can get this. I just multiply that term by c, but I can easily get my two delta x because these add up, 
These cancel, of course, because they have opposite signs and so they cancel out. These are going to add, and again, I've divided them over by the two, so no problem. And the next term, which is order delta x4, cancels, right? And so on. So I have this term, u n i plus 1 minus u n i minus 1. And I have also, um, so this first term here is du dt. I've divided over already by delta t, so I'm going to write it, write it here. I'm moving it to the right-hand side, so du dt at points n i. I'm going to put that on the, on the outside of the parentheses. I also have, um, remember this one, I've divided... This one's added. I divide it over by delta x, so I only have du dx. But I've multiplied this term by c, so I have c du dx. And all of these at n and i equal to, now all of the higher order terms equal to delta t halves from this term here. Only one delta t because I divide it over by one delta t, so remember that one. Okay. And I have the second derivative. And then I have, for the special terms I have, plus, so this first term is already counted for here, after divided by delta x. This one canceled out, and so I'm only left with these. And so I have c delta x squared, because I've divided over by one of these, divided by 6, and the third order derivative. Okay, plus some higher order terms which are in time of order delta t squared uh, because this term I'm not considering so that's order delta t squared and in time is delta x fourth because the next one here was four delta x four but that cancels out because it had the next the same sign when I was subtracted and the following one that it wasn't written at also was delta x to the fifth power when I divide it over by the one that x is the x4. You all agree? Okay. So these terms over here, this is the truncation error. E T, the truncation error. And I need to let you go, so I'm gonna to leave to um, so the truncation error, I'm going to need to pick up from there. Truncation error is the difference between the numerical scheme and the differential equation. And in the example, you can see that the truncation error, this is all the, in here, and you can see that this error vanishes when delta t and delta x tend to zero. Of course, right? Delta t and delta x tend to zero, this vanishes. So the scheme is consistent. Next, we have to look at stability. Okay, we're going to pick up from here because you need to go to your next class. And, um, and uh, so we'll reveal a lot about stability in, on Tuesday. Uh, please come to the lab tomorrow so uh, that we can um, fix your, your steps one through eight.